after waiting months and months for it, something sensational has finally arrived on my doorstep. Here it is, the HTC Sensation 4G. I'm sorry I had to do the joke just one more time. Here it is, Sensation 4G, one of the hottest Android devices, and it's not even out yet on T-Mobile. Coming June 15th for $199.99 after rebate. It has a 1.2 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor, 4.3 inch QHD display, 8 megapixel camera on the back that can shoot 1080p video, front facing camera, and it has Android 2.3 gingerbread with HTC Sense 3.0. So it's a hot device, really well specced, and it's something that a lot of people have been excited about between this and the Galaxy S2. Now, is this the best Android phone that's coming? Will this be the best one of the year? Is it going to live up to the hype? We'll find out that more in the full review. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy because they're going to hook us up with phones just like this that we can give to you in the One Paw Bandit game. So when you go into Best Buy Mobile, you walk out working. They'll help you set up your web, your email, and more. But let's check this sucker out. HTC Sensation 4G. Is this the device to get? Continuing along on things that have changed in Sense 3.0, the Messages app has received an overhaul as well. You'll see it's a little bit different here in comparison to you know, an older version of Sense. I bring back the merch just to show you as an example. That's what the old looks like. Out with the old, in with the new. Here is the, uh, the new build. So let's bring up T-Mobile, for example, and you can see that it presents it in this thread-like format now with these little text boxes, if you will, very iOS slash perhaps touch wizish. And we can come down here and open up and say the quick brown fox is ready to parte. 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 And you can see the red uh, thing or the red line there appears below and gives you the ability to correct. So the correction system has improved as well. I've noticed this over the weekend that I've been using the device. I've just got back from San Francisco from the reader meetup, and there are uh, changes to the uh, the dictionary as well. So nice changes as well. I've been relatively pleased. You can see keyboard down there in portrait mode. You can throw it over into landscape mode. Use it as well. And the camera is really not showing it off, but that QHD display, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you can just see the clarity of these keys is exceptional. I mean, it's just a nice high-resolution display. How are you? Nice high-resolution yeah, display. And there's a hyphen in between there, but didn't feel like putting it in. So that's it in landscape mode as well, but just beautiful, beautiful, rich color and uh, really easy to see. Really impressed with the uh, the display overall. So easy to type on. There are no other keyboards that come with this thing. It is the HTC Sense keyboard all the way. Of course, you can sideload. This, de this device does support sideloading. You can sideload things like Swipe. Motorola's multi-touch keyboard, which I haven't been able to get working on Gingerbread, but that's a side note. Uh, and some of the other keyboards from the Android market. Now on that topic, here's the market. And uh, it's pretty much the same as any Android device over the past year, but just to show you what it looks like. And I really wanted to bring it up because I wanted you to see that green up against that high resolution screen. Just absolutely beautiful. But anyway, you have the, uh, the app carousel up here, frequently downloaded apps. We can go to T-Mobile and take a look, for example. And let's go to LOL, LOL, Libs Free. Description, screenshot, sharing, reviews, and related developer info and market content. You can use this in portrait and in landscape. And they've really done a good job of improving this, making it a little bit more user friendly. And as you know, one of my favorite things about Android, the ability to do automatic app updating. So you have an app, let's say CNN, for example, and uh, CNN needs to be updated. Well, on iOS, you have to go into the App Store as it stands right now, go into the App Store, click on it, enter your password for a darn update, and wait for it to uh, download. With this one, if you have automatic app updating checked, automatically downloads it for you without anything from you or any added assistance from you. Love that on Android, huge benefit, and uh, that does continue over, obviously into this device. So let's go down and take a look at T-Mobile TV, because that's something that's unique to some of these high-end T-Mobile devices. And let's see what it looks like. And also, this is kind of a test of T-Mobile's HSPA Plus connectivity in the Charlotte area. 4G is what we're running on, except here. And see how it looks on this big display that's smudged up with my fingerprints. T-Mobile TV loading right up. Now, I warn you, like I said before, 1,520 milliamp hour battery. If you're using things like T-Mobile TV, on a regular basis, your battery's gonna die pretty quickly, but we'll load up T-Mobile TV. And then 30 day trial, let's start that trial right up. And starting up, let's get the sound. And let's take a look at, don't know what it is, but we're gonna, we're gonna do that one. No, we're gonna do MSNBC, but bam, authorizing. 
and you can see the uh, audio is a little quiet. Let's see if I can check here my media home. I don't see any ability to externally or raise it through the software. So that's as loud as it gets. You can see Hotball on MSNBC with Chris Matthews. Um, that was my best impersonation of Chris Matthews. But you got that, and then you have a game pre-installed, and I really do want to show you this as well. We'll go to Nova, and I don't have a clue how it works because I haven't played Nova, but I did uh, start up. I just want to show you the graphics on this device as a result of it having a dual-core processor. You can see there, bam, game loft. Now, does it hold up to something like a G2X or another uh, you know, dual-core device like the Galaxy S2? We have to wait for the Quadrant Standard scores to see that, but you can really see the shadowing back here. I mean, it looks good. Let me zoom it in a little bit so you can see or bring it up to the camera. Sorry for the glare. But, I mean, just pretty impressive. Like, I mean, again, you're not really seeing the full effect through the lens, but uh, the graphics are impressive, but I still see a little bit of a lag when I'm scrolling through certain things. Um, it's definitely not as fast as the Galaxy S2 or uh, even the G2X that are just instantaneously fast. So click on that. So you see a little bit of lag there, for example, in bringing up the photo gallery, things that you don't necessarily see on, um, on some of the other high-end uh, dual-core devices. Now, obviously, it's not doing it for me for whatever reason right now. You know you want to show somebody something, and you go to show them and try to manipulate it, and it doesn't work. As soon as I turn the camera off, we'll see some lag. But fortunately, it is, uh, seems to be at bay right now. Let's take a look at Quadrant Standard Scores, give you an idea of what those are. And this, I think, you'll be relatively surprised with. Now, audio quality, you know, I was a little disappointed. And I don't know if it was just T-Mobile was having a bad day. We'll turn on the audio quality as soon as this is done so you can see. But uh, a little bit staticky, and the volume wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. Otherwise, you know, it seemed to hold itself well, even though this device is notorious, at least this unit in particular, is notorious for showing zero bars or looking like it has no service. I didn't drop the call. It got choppy when I took it to the T-Mobile dead spot but did not drop it. Now, like I said, you know, it'll regularly, when I'm sitting here in the office, it'll show three bars, then it'll show zero, then it'll hop to one, then hop back to three, then zero again. And you may have seen that in the video. I think I saw it at one point go to zero. But uh, it seems to be an HTC thing. I haven't, it hasn't really reflected uh, upon call quality. Calls have still gone through relatively decently. Now, just to show you the benchmark results, 1,970 on Quadrant Standard. Now, obviously, take this with a grain of salt because Quadrant Standard uh, has some issues, or so they say, with dual core processors. So don't read too much into this, but you look at this in comparison to something like the Galaxy S2 that's in the 3000s and something like the G2X that's in the uh, high 2000s and you really kind of question, is this the fastest device out there on the market? It's certainly the prettiest. I love, you know, if it was for build quality alone, this thing is beautiful. It fits well in the hand and feels good. I mean, if it were just build quality alone, this device would win the award, but fortunately, build quality and speed play a role together. It's 50-50 there. Let's open up speed test and do that and check T-Mobile's uh, HSPA Plus connectivity on this device. So we're going to bring up speed test. It'll load up the server. Keep it on Greensboro. Yeah, uh, megabits per second. We're going to begin the test right now and see how it performs. So speeds, you know, have been relatively decent. I got this in San Francisco when I was attending the, uh, or out there for the reader meetup and some other meetings. And uh, speeds weren't, you know, incredibly great in San Francisco. That said, this has been a T-Mobile, relatively uh, nice T-Mobile spot. Seven megabits per second for HSPA+. Plus. That's pretty darn impressive for, uh, for HSPA+. Plus. Usually it's four to six megabits per second around here, so seven is, uh, is quite impressive. We'll see upload about 1.12 megabits per second. We'll restart this just to see while I'm signing off. But overall, Sensation 4G, it's coming, and for a lot of people, this is going to be an awesome device. I don't think, unfortunately, in comparison to the Galaxy S2, T-Mobile G2X, it's not as fast as both of those. Now, that said, the body beats, blows both of them out of the water. Absolutely beautiful build quality, and if it were for the looks alone, this is the device I would go with. In terms of speed, I think people that have used the G2X and Galaxy S2 are going to be disappointed in the fact that this doesn't quite compare in the speed department. That said, since 3.0 offers some nice touches, some nice customizations and more, so you have to decide, can I take the slowness, or maybe a little bit slower, to have since 3.0 and all the customizations that come with it, or do I want to go faster with a style build of you know, stock Android or something like that? The choice is yours, or at least it will be yours on June 15th. Much more coverage to come with the Sensation 4G on Phone Dog. I've got a dogfight lined up with the G2X, a dogfight lined up with the Galaxy S2, and a bunch of other smartphones before I have to send this bad boy back 
to HTC. So keep it on the site, locked on the site for those. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're giving away a ton of iPads, smartphones and more as part of our colossal iPad 2 and smartphone sweepstakes. And follow me on Twitter, phone dog underscore Aaron. Ask me any questions. Let me know what you think about the sensation or any questions you have. I'll be happy to answer those. And of course, uh, like me on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash phone dog AB. In, in a nutshell, it's sensational, but not as uh, sensational as many people thought it was going to be. I really butchered that, but you get the idea. That's the last time I'm going to use that joke. Thanks so much for watching. Much more coverage to come on the sensation 4G on phonedog.com. We'll see you next time.